an additional role that I have working with Anti-Corruption and Money Laundering Association. Uh, and it, it, there's been a, a strong interest from banks in understanding who they are investing in and, and understanding who beneficial owners of companies are uh, to avoid any risks associated with, for instance, um, investing in a company that uses forced labor or uh, you know, engages in any type of labor abuses um, in, in their supply chain. And so because these technologies are becoming more granular and because they're becoming more transparent, and you have the, the potential risk that um, a market or a financial institution could end up getting caught up in a scandal, they're asking for more information and they're insisting that these technologies be put in place to ensure that they don't uh, experience that risk. And so I think the trend is only going to be more in that direction, not less. And, and those fisheries that embrace the technology and say, hey, we want to do the right thing and we're doing the right thing and we can prove it. Um, I think they'll be the ones that, that succeed. And to give a, a brief example, you know, for instance, uh, Austral Fisheries has been engaged in a blockchain traceability project where they are tracing uh, uh, Antarctic toothfish from the point that it comes over the rail and all the way to the point that it hits the, the table in a restaurant. And they have a, a clear record, a clear connection, a steel thread between the point that that fish comes over to the point that it hits the table. And you know they can say with absolute confidence that fish was caught in a legal area using legal means according to a particular quota, and um, and you know they're, they're one of few fisheries that can do that with a, a high degree of confidence. And, and I think that's where things are headed.